So today we are in one of the most beautiful cities in the world, Porto, and we came to visit Leao and Viva Lab, some of the most beautiful souls in the precious plastic community. Welcome to Viva. Thank it's so good to have you here. <laughs> okay, so here we are with Leao from Viva Lab, long time friend and Precious Plastic member. I finally had the, uh, the luck of coming here to Porto and visit you. I was here a couple of years ago and you were in a radically different place. <laughs> it's incredible to see the growth and how you managed to get a really nice space with the opportunity to host more and more people, educate more students, and I can't wait to see the space. So today, I'm gonna hand it over to Leao. He's gonna show you a little bit the space and then he's gonna go over all the incredible projects they do here. <laughs> Welcome to Viva Lab. I'm Leão, one of the co-founders, together with Miguel, Alexandre, and Tawa. At Viva Lab, we are a fab lab here in Porto, focused in design, education, and social innovation. Precious Plastic is one of our key projects where we can focus on education, design, and social innovation, creating an impact to the local community at the national and the local level. So now let's see our space and come with me. So here we have our clean fab lab. We have our 3D printers an electronics bench, and some of the projects and designs that we've been doing here with our makers. And here in the basement, we have our workspace so that people can transform different products. We have normal hand tools, we have a working bench. Over here, we have our CNC carver to carve plastic beautiful uh, products. For example, a skateboard, we have a plastic version. That so one of the cool things uh, of a fab lab and what we want to show in this video is how we can collaborate with the digital fabrication and the precious plastic and create beautiful products. Since plastic is basically a material that works like wood, you can use all of these tools that you have in your workspace to transform and create beautiful products. Over here in our space, we also have a laser, big laser cutter where you can uh, laser cut several materials and we uh, are pioneering also a uh, laser cutting uh, plastic. We can create beautiful products using the laser cutter as well. Over here we have our polyvalent uh, space where we do workshops, events. We have our uh, precious plastic workspace over there also. And also one of our main projects is building machines for the local and international community. Right, so basically in the last two years, we've built around 53 machines at the national level and international. Redesigned the four sets of machines. Since we go to a lot of schools, universities and events, it's not easy to transport these machines. So inspired by the great work from Jan from uh, Precious Plastic, we designed them as a way that people can disassemble them, create a flat pack version so that you can go anywhere uh, with these uh, cool machines. So we build and sell the injection machine with the quick release uh, system, the shredder version three. And here we have our uh, smaller, uh, fully disassembled version of the sheet press that we hope to release as a how-to. And here we have our uh, extruder, a smaller version, uh, so that it's easier to transport. And of course, you can find these uh, precious plastic machines in the bazaar. So we mainly use these machines for educational and social innovation projects. And I have here my colleague uh, and co-founder uh, of Viva Lab, Alexandra, uh, that's uh, responsible for the Hi. educational programs. Okay. All right, here we are. Okay, Alexandra, thank you for uh, taking the time. Fresh Plastic is very often about education and you guys have been nailing it for the last, what, five, six years? Yeah. And I'm sure you've educated hundreds, if not thousands of kids. So I want to know and learn as much as I can from what you do with kids and how you are training basically, basically this new generation of recyclers on how to uh, think and look at plastic in a different way. So we call it plastic play and the main idea is that at the end of the day kids really understand why plastic is precious. That's what we intend, uh, not as garbage but as something that we can use to do things. We've been in 10 schools this year and we worked with 1,500 kids. We went to a lot of events. It's amazing to see how they look to the plastic at the end of the, the workshop. And we're looking at what? Like kids of uh, 5, 6, 10? 
How old are they? We mainly uh, work with kids from 13 to 18, but then sometimes we go to lower schools and we do workshops with primary schools and also with kindergarten. And now we develop some small machines. They work with uh, plasticine and they really inject molds, but not for real, but they can feel how it works, everything. Can you just run me through a day? How does it work? You get there with the machines, you set it up and then you train or the machines are already there. How does it work? We put the machines in our cars and we take the machines to the schools and we set up uh, usually outside because schools usually have covered places. Then we give them trash, plastic. They have to sort, sort the plastic in their own way. And then afterwards, we tell them which plastic is which. We go to the shredder, we shred some plastic, and the other group usually go to the injection machines, and the other usually goes to the big extruder. Yeah, I forgot the name in English. <laughs> so they can try all the machines. In the end, they all take something home. Usually, we also show them what happens when we do the cycle of the recycling, the usual cycle where you really try to show them in a the theatrical way what happens to plastic if we bring it back to the cycle. And in the end, we also end or always end with them shouting, plastic is precious. <laughs> really? Yeah, because we really want them to take home the idea that the problem is not the plastic. We are the problem. Yeah. Uh, humans are the problem. The way we use plastic and what we do with it, it's a problem. Because plastic is an amazing um, thing, but we have to change our way to, to interact with plastic. And you know that uh, our workshops are working when you have the parents calling, complaining that their kids uh, are making them recycle more in their house. The precious plastic workshops have an amazing impact also in adults. Lots of people don't know how long plastic lasts. They don't know there are different types of plastic. They don't know a lot of things. So knowledge is power. And these are very much the more intangible impact of precious plastic. Sometimes it's about the tons of plastic you recycle, sometimes it's about the amount of revenue that you make recycling plastic, but very often it's this more intangible impact that we have as a community on people, on the community, really educating and inspiring a whole new generation to basically look at this material in a different way and trying to use it in more appropriate ways. So one of the first projects that we did was this book from Mario Cruz, a photojournalist that went to Manila to showcase the plastic waste problem in the city. We designed the covers and you see along the book uh, a lot of photos of the city and the way that people are living uh, in the middle of the waste. And the final uh, picture, you find out that uh, what you've been seeing all the, all the time is a river. So underneath all of this waste, there's a river that uh, it's possible for a kid with a king-sized bed uh, to sleep on top of it and float. We designed this book as a way to people feel the discomfort that the citizens feel in Manila in their own hands. It was a success. We did a thousand covers and it um, sold out in less than an hour. So far, we've been able to build over 13 spaces uh, around the country, and we are trying to focus a lot uh, on the community. The people that are going to use this space try to find out what are their needs and what type of plastic waste they, they produce so that we can create uh, an impactful uh, project for their uh, needs. So, for example, we did a project in Ovar, a local uh, fisherman community, where we wanted to teach uh, the fishermen the importance of collecting the plastic they collect in their nets and not throw it back to uh, the sea. So for the fisherman uh, project, we designed this uh, needle that they normally carve it in wood by hand. That will take a lot of time. And it's an, a cool way to incentivize the community to use the plastic that they collect to create a useful product that they can use in their daily lives. Another project we are doing at the local level is with the City Hall of Porto, where we're thinking how we re redesign the city. All right, so here we are at the end of the video. Thank you very much, Liao, for taking the time to share with us all the beautiful work that you here at Viva Lab, really, really inspiring. And I really hope that you guys have learned a little bit on how 
much power can education and free knowledge have and how many people can be inspired and look at a material like plastic in a completely different way. I really hope that one day Viva Lab is going to be able to share with Precious Plastic and with the rest of the world how they educate all these people and potentially open source their teaching methods. But until then, see you next time. Ciao!